Okay. Thanks, everybody, for uh, your patience. Yeah, I believe it's uh, the audio is working uh, now. So, um, again, many thanks for everybody's engagement. We didn't know how many people wanted to stay around, so we're adding some chairs uh, because there are more people than we expected. Uh, this is the, the session is being uh, webcast uh, as before. And let me just uh, set the context a little bit for, for this uh, part of the, of the day. Uh, we thought it would be useful, in addition to having created space for a fair amount of informal conversation, bilaterally, plurilaterally, as the case may be during the day. That's why we created space in the morning, space before and after the press conference. To also have a structured scoping workshop about what this initiative should and shouldn't focus on. And we did that this morning with strong uh, leadership from you, uh, Minister, and you, Fadi, and many others uh, in the room. Uh, then we needed to announce that this was an undertaking that was going forward, so we did a press conference. And now uh, we thought it would be important to begin to move from the what, and what not, by the way, which is just as important, to the how, to the more of the organizational questions. Because as, as, all, as many of you, if not all of you know, having been involved in this field and in other multi-stakeholder endeavors, there isn't a specific a sole formula. You really have to, uh, you have to think about deliberately and consult widely about how best to organize a process uh, like this. So that's why we thought at the end of the day it would be useful to come together uh, for a, a debrief on these various levels of discussions we've had today. What does it mean for how we would want to organize this collective effort going forward? Now, uh, you may wonder, well, um, what, what's, what about the configuration? So in moving to more of an organizational conversation, you need to have some way to get a coherent and focused conversation. So you need to have some people kind of around the table. But in, in our view, you also need to make it open. Uh, and so we've got room for people who, want, who are here early in the day and want to be in the room to be in the room, but also it's being webcast. But we thought, since we have a certain responsibility as sort of an incubational platform, if you will, to begin to organize a little bit more of a focused conversation about, about the what, certain dimensions of the what. So that needs, as you can see in the agenda, you know, based on the discussion today, what do we see as the medium-term objectives for the initiative? What should be the key goals in the next uh, six months, including in, but not limited to uh, Davos? And also with respect to the, the activities that we've, we've uh, identified that people think would be a good idea, which is to advance the dialogue, uh, engage this wider set of leaders from different disciplines, ministry portfolios, and the like. And what, what projects? What are the specific academic and other cooperative undertakings which would be enabling of trying to move to a more action-oriented set of dialogues that would begin to uh, direct uh, expertise and resources toward solutions for moving from issue identification has been articulated here to some solutions. What types of international cooperation would be useful for developing countries? On the governance building side, capacity building, but also on the access side. You know, there were a whole range of, of questions that were, and suggestions basically for directions in this area. This is not so much to rehash those, it's more to talk about how do we organize a good process to advance that. Now, importantly in that regard, we're also posing the question about, well, we do need some sort of a steering committee. We call it a transitional steering committee, and I'll come back to that nomenclature in a moment, uh, to help you know, have at least a, a, a focused set of people who feel a sense of responsibility to help uh, uh, focus the input we're getting and help the forum and, it, and partners shape that into a process that will be robust. Uh, and, that, and very importantly, as a subset of that, we have explicitly said that a third dimension of this exercise, beyond the policy dialogue and beyond the concrete projects and what not, enabling uh, activities, is a, a consultation for the next six months about what should be the ultimate configuration of this collective undertaking, which can range from no, no structure configuration whatsoever all the way to something like a formal institution. And there are no preconceptions about that, but we need to have a consultation about what would be an appropriate um, 
a framework, if you will. I, I think of this as a, in the broadest terms, as a, you know, what kind of international cooperative framework would would help to advance the spirit of of the Net Mundial principles along these dimensions, you know, more action-oriented dialogue, homing in on potential solutions, and enabling pieces of cooperation, either in terms of resources or expertise. Now, the term uh, transitional Stub steering committee, um, for me, is is uh, is has a certain uh, explanatory relevance, and let me let me tell you why. It is transitional in that we don't really know beyond the six months what we'll agree or what there will be a consensus around in terms of an enabling organizational framework. So, by definition, anybody that is involved in that uh, in that sort of steering conversation has to understand that they're only there in a transitional uh, fashion. We, as an institution believe that applies to us as well. We don't presume, assume, in fact, probably to the contrary, that we, we'll have some sort of a organizational role beyond that. If there's demand for that, we'll consider it, but we're not presuming that by any stretch because I would note we are not an operational agency on any issue, let alone on this one. We, and we're not a stakeholder per se. While we are, we, we are made up of a whole range, a constellation of, of communities of leaders from different stakeholders and different regions and different disciplines, we don't represent any of them, including the business community. The business community pay most of the bills because they're members and partners for specific services and activities, but we do not represent the business community. We do not take positions on behalf of the business community at all. So, so we're a catalytic platform for dialogue and for some concrete cooperation and collective action where, uh, you know, in a public, private, or multi-stakeholder way, people want to have those kinds of dialogues and, and cooperations. And that's how we see our role in this regard. We have a certain responsibility, I think, for the next six months to help ensure that there's a good incubation process. Um, but it is a, it's a transitory uh, role, uh, most likely. Having said that, we have, we, we have ongoing dialogue activities and in our summits and whatnot. And we, for us, this is such a relevant issue that we've, you know, we think we should be ensuring that there's a couple of good years, at least, of robust dialogue in our platforms that, uh, that should go on and, and link with whatever happens to, to this part, but it's not necessarily the same thing. Uh, so there should be good two-way aspects of that. But the other significance, and I'm sorry to go on here, but I think the context is important since this is a very complex terrain. Uh, you know, just surely from a project management standpoint, this is a very complex uh, um, uh, proposition here. And that is that um, uh, there, there is, um, you know, nobody has ordained that we all get together in this room and think about how to organize international cooperation better. Nobody has given any one of us any, any broader legitimate authority to do that. We're coming together because we have a commonality of interests to a larger or lesser degree. Yeah. And so we're all here in that spirit. And so as we think organizationally, we have to think, and this is particularly relevant in a multi-stakeholder undertaking, that um, there are no tablets that came down from the mountain, if you will, that said, you shall gather here and you shall make X, Y, and Z d decision. Uh, there's no, uh, no decision taken from an intergovernmental process or from any other stakeholder process. It's, it's our, our instinct, as we discussed in, in the morning, that this would be a useful undertaking to try to organize. And we now, in the best faith, in keeping with the principles that were articulated uh, so carefully uh, in the Net Mundial uh, conference, we now think about how to organize a, a, an enabling platform for deeper cooperation. Now, there's some precedent for the kinds of thing, the kind of uh, journey that we're embarking on, and this is why the the terminology is relevant here. Just by an accident of history, I uh, I was involved myself in a what was called then a transitional working group that Kofi Annan, when he was Secretary General of the United Nations, convened, totally outside of any decision taken by an intergovernmental body, about I guess it must be about a dozen years ago when there was a kind of a, a gathering sense that the infectious diseases in developing countries were getting so serious and so endemic and so lacking a focused and scaled resources applied to it that he thought that there needed to be a discussion about how to improve international cooperation in this regard. And uh, this eventually became the Global Fund, which sits across the lake, uh, to fight uh, HIV, AIDS, TB, and malaria. But there was no playbook 
on how to create that uh, exercise. What, everybody knew it needed to have some legitimate uh, form, but everybody knew also this was an exercise in improving the, the performance, the effectiveness of international cooperation. And the effectiveness is a very important component of legitimacy of international cooperation and governance. So he took the initiative to invite, uh, on his own authority, um, a, uh, a range of governments, uh, civil society, and business people together to have a, 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 a thought process. And I don't remember exactly how long it lasted, but I wouldn't be surprised it was around six to eight months or so to, uh, to see if a consensus could be built on what that framework would look like. And eventually it took the form of the Global Fund. Uh, and, uh, and it had, it was, by the way, it was not nearly as multi-stakeholder balanced as we're talking about here today. There were a couple of civil society representatives. Uh, there were a couple from the private sector, one from the foundation world, and one from the business or operating company world, a range of developing country and uh, developed country governments. And basically, people felt their way and just came to the table with good intentions because they shared the fundamental sense that we did need to improve uh, the effectiveness of, of international cooperation on this crucial a global priority, and that we were going to sort of figure it out as we went. And the, 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 the test, ultimately, of the legitimacy of the exercise is whether it commanded um, engagement uh, and support when it took shape in, near the end of that consultative process. So there was a transitional working group during that phase, not dissimilar to what I imagine we're going to end up doing here, that then came, gave birth to not a a, you know, a, um, a treaty or a, a formal agreement, but basically a recommendation uh, to, to the international community as what would be useful. And then the test of it was whether um, uh, people felt that it was useful enough that they would actually want to engage and support it and participate. And, and, that, and it, that was, it, it met that test, created the Global Fund, and the Global Fund you know, has had uh, you know, quite, a, quite a bit of challenges, but basically it is now a feature that is well accepted as, uh, as, as being an asset, a facet, of, uh, of how we've advanced progress on that crucial issue. So that's philosophically where, where I think we in the forum come to the table. Um, and that's basically what I, I invite everybody else in that spirit. It's, 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 it's very much the net mundial spirit, I think, Minister, but it's, um, but, but it's drawing from experience elsewhere. And I think we need to proceed in that fashion. So in terms of who's around the table and, and why and whatnot, I think we as sort of an incubation platform just thought, well, when we were thinking originally um, about whether this, we should embark uh, in this direction, we had an initial set of, of consultations in cooperation with, uh, with ICANN with some governments, a philosophical spectrum of governments, um, with some other uh, key actors, public, private, civil society. And it was only after talking to them did we have at least an initial sense, okay, that maybe we should now proceed to begin to think about how to formulate this and then expand from there the, con the consultation process. And today is basically, you know, the additional concentric circles of wider and wider consultation and, 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 and deliberative thought with uh, other, other parties. And that's the spirit in which we thought, well, we would invite those that we initially talked to, the, the governments, uh, some of the uh, civil society groups, mm -hmm. uh, some of the private sector folks, academics and whatever, that gave us an initial sense that there might be something here that's worth doing, as well as some people who look like they might be potentially good candidates for uh, such a transitional steering committee by virtue of their expertise, their stature, um, uh, and reflecting the other interests, reflecting in some way the, the, the diversity of stakeholders and, and, and regions or geographies that one would want to create here. But it is not, it's not, nothing's been decided in that regard. It's basically a start of the conversation to consult on indeed that question. How should we compose a, steer, a transitional steering committee? And very importantly for, for this afternoon, how should we uh, frame and structure this consultation process over the next six months. Because one of the principal responsibilities of this transitional steering committee should be to help frame and structure those consultations and indeed help to lead pieces of it and to interpret it 
and come back together and begin to shape as this, tra as this uh, transitional working group that was created on the help structure of the Global Fund begin to interpret those consultations months from now into options or even a, a, a consensus uh, suggestion in that regard. So I think it's in that spirit that I would like to suggest that we, we begin the discussion this afternoon. It will not have a final conclusion. There will not be a vote or a, a, a firm decision. I think what we want to do is to get a, a rough sense of um, what people feel would be the right way to conduct consultations on the, on the organizational questions here. Where, how, who, et cetera. What's the right way to structure the Transitional Steering Committee? Um, uh, in this regard. We'll take on board those, those suggestions. Uh, we've, you see the names of people who represent both some of the founding uh, partner governance that we consulted with, as well as some of these potential candidates for it. But I think what we want to do is, is to get a robust discussion around that, and that will help inform going forward what, what might be, uh, you know, where the center of gravity would be on, on this. Now, I feel a commitment, having said all this, that we need to strike a balance uh, between um, uh, robust consultation and inclusiveness on the one hand and effectiveness. This, this, uh, this is an initiative. This is, a, this is an exercise in collective action. It's, 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 uh, therefore, you need to perform. We need to perform here. Um, so we need to strike that, that proper balance. And so our role a little bit in the forum is to help think through and I think you've got to give us a, l a little bit of space to help provide, you know, nudge in this regard and provide a little bit of leadership of how we bound uh, both of these questions, the consultation framing and also how we compose the steering committee. But we're very much um, wanting to strike a good balance in that regard. With that, let me start. I think what, what I will do um, by first asking a couple for a couple comments is then to break up the agenda a little bit so we get some focused conversation about a couple of these points. But before we get into a specific conversation about the consultation process, and before we get into a specific cons uh, conversation about how we compose this uh, Transitional Steering Committee, I'd like to ask uh, you, Minister, whether you'd like to offer any uh, initial uh, thoughts as to how we might proceed in this regard. Well, thank you, thank you for, for your introduction. Well, I think that the, the first thing that came to my mind was to uh, to work uh, with a similar organization that we created for Net Mundial. We we proposed at that time one uh, a global uh, board composed of a multi stakeholder several stakeholders, and then we had specific uh, boards for for the executive multi stakeholder committee for the high level. So I think that in, in, in this case here, we can think of the transitional steering committee as equivalent to the, to the board, and then we have specific committees for each project. Because uh, uh, it seems to me that we need to present results. If we work on the, on the organization without presenting any results from six months from now, people will get frustrated. So I think that we have to, to do both things at the same time. Work on the organization and also uh, to, to start working on, on, on the project. And concerning the, these uh, committees to oversee the projects, my suggestion would to have something similar to OneNet. Instead of uh, appointing names for these committees, the OneNet would collect names from, from the different uh, 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 groups or communities, and then those names would, uh, would be part of the, of the committee. In this, if we do it this way, so we will have a support from the several uh, civil society organizations, from business organizations, because we are listening to listen them instead of just picking up some, some, some certain names and, and, and suggest. So that's, that, that's my, 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 my idea. I think that we should uh, work from now on the organization aspect of, the, of this uh, uh, program, but at the same time start working on some problems to show results. Buddy, would you care to offer any uh, initial framing thoughts? No, I'm ready to go. Okay. To okay. All right. You said exactly what you need. 
you said consultations, transitional steering committee. Are you going to discuss the projects as well? Yes, if, if we have time, I think we certainly ought to discuss uh, the projects, if you will. Can we start then wi can start on with the consultations? Uh, you know, get some guidance from or how people feel that a, what would constitute a truly robust consultation process with respect to the ultimate organizational uh, arrangements in this regard? So I'll start with my thoughts on this. I think some basic rules. First, the consultation must be broad and wide. Therefore, it cannot just be for physical meetings. It has to be virtual. We need to make sure that we have virtual reach to all the people who want to participate in the consultation. Uh, some of it will be obviously on the ground and in uh, meetings. Uh, my second uh, request would be that we do not restrict the consultation in meetings to WEF meetings. So we appreciate that uh, the World Economic Forum is inviting us to, to their China meeting, to their India meeting, and they will open up the debate and the discussion in these meetings. But we should, from the beginning, uh, ensure that the consultation is broader than uh, the family of the World Economic Forum. There are other families. There is the technical family, of which many of us here are representing. There is the uh, civil society families. There are regions like Andile will talk later about Africa. Uh, uh, His Excellency Minister Helmi will talk about uh, the Middle East. So there are regions where we can reach not everything necessarily through the WEF, just enabled by the Transitional Steering Committee so we have a common message and a common goal. The third thing I'd like to propose on the consultations is that the consultations not stop in Davos, that we actually complete the consultations for a full six months. So Davos becomes a high point and an important point, but not the final point. Uh, there, there should be a follow-up after Davos because a lot would have happened. Uh, so my suggestion, if uh, Anne Bouvereau would invite us, is to maybe do it at the end of February at her uh, very important meeting in Barcelona at the GSMA uh, Annual Mobile Congress. So we could kind of finish with a chance to get all the input, including Davos, and then the transition with the steering committee. So I'm trying to suggest that the consultation should be broad, should be virtual, should be real, should be meetings beyond WEF, and should last for the full six months. Uh, you know, we're now on the 28th of August, I think your meeting is on the 28th of February, right, Anne? So it's exactly six months. So we can, we can do it at that time. This way we can have a closing. So these are just my suggestions. Um, in terms of the substance of the consultations, uh, I think you made a very important point, Rick, I want to echo. The consultations are about what happens post the six months. You know, today Rick used in the press conference the term pathways. Right? in order not to necessarily say, we're going to create a global fund for the internet or an organization. We don't know. We should consult and listen. And the process will lead us to the pathways of best way to take these solutions forward. If one of these pathways uh, ends up being we need to create uh, a mechanism or an institution or an organization, we'll deal with it then and we'll decide how as partners. You know, Italy has been at the table from day one and I met with uh, Prime Minister Renzi who was, for example, very supportive. He says, look, Italy is here and ready to support this effort. If you need to have uh, a home for any institutions, we're ready to do it. So many people have already offered to help with the results. But right now, let's be open Let's consult, let's listen, and let's take it all the way to the end of the six months and then decide together what's the best way forward. But the scope is about the form post the six months. The projects will be dealt with separately and we'll talk about that. Is that, is that okay with you, Rick, or am I in the same scope as you? Well, the question is for others. Well, yes. Yes. And I have a question. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that uh, I, don't, I feel like we sort of need to go a little slower, to be honest. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm just looking at the civil society discussion that's happening on my computer, and it's not moving as fast as you guys are moving. Um, to go from, like, Davos to GSMA like, it's just, like, people are blowing up here. Um, it's Davos says, 
um, everything that civil society does not say. It says exclusion, it says elitism, it says government to corporate, it does not say internet users, it does not say civil society. I think similarly with GSMA, to have a conclusion of a global consultation um, with all due respect, is is highly problematic. Um, and and why I say we need to move slower is like I, I'm not clear about what this actually is. Um, I'm not clear who the founding partners are. Uh, I'm still not clear on the terms of reference to be ready at talking about the consultation and having the meeting points. Um, is, is certainly not bringing civil society along. And there are a number of different groups that are here on this discussion. Um, so uh, I'd like to just slow us down a little. You get Labelle, Transparency International. Thank you uh, for for this uh, invitation to speak. Um, I think that obviously the steering committee uh, will decide a whole lot of things, but hopefully this is for input, uh, hoping that it can help. Um, obviously, one needs to use the regional meetings, so the face-to-face -face meetings, and you're going to have a number of them, I presume, this fall, Rick, um, taking place. Plus, of course, uh, using the net virtually, go out, but go out in an active way and uh, using all of the constituencies that we've been talking about, you know, whether it's government, business, civil society, and academic sector as well, which I think is very important. Think tanks, which may not always fit in the pure academic sector, but may, who may have been doing some work. My second point is on what goes out when you invite people to, uh, when you consult. And I think that the framing will be very important. Uh, so that one, you can build on Brazil, principles being there, I would hope that, you know, that would be part of the sketch that goes out. Um, secondly, that you may want to include sort of a number of key questions without those being exhaustive. And by that, here are some of them, of course. One is how can one optimize uh, the use of internet for the good? I'll come back to that in a minute. Secondly, uh, what needs to be mitigated, which is creating major problems in our societies? with the internet. What are the barriers to access for people? Uh, this morning, uh, Klaus was talking about universal access. Um, you know, how does one arrive at universal access? And if I go back to optimization, um, one would not necessarily need to go into those details in, in the framing of the consultation. But uh, you know, if you're looking at optimization, um, the, and you mentioned that, sir, this morning, uh, in terms of the importance of having, um, of governments being transparent, being accountable, and of the people being able to participate. And of course, the internet is tremendous in this regard. And <clears throat> Brazil does on time uh, revenue and budget dispense disbursements uh, on a day to day basis. So, on time information to, to people uh, in order to prevent corruption in this case, but also to make sure that people can participate because they have the information. And this is a tremendous tool. In terms of the, the areas, for example, for protection, we certainly know that. Um, the internet has been, unfortunately, very useful in doing money laundering, in promote, you know, in helping with illicit trade and so on. I'm just using a few examples here, and I will not go further. But my main point is that I think that as one goes out without telling people what to say and leaving a lot of space for additional uh, areas, both of functionality and of content and of issues that I think if you can start by doing at least some key questions in order to be able to elicit uh, some, some good reactions to the consultation. Thank you. I'd like just uh, to comment on Solomon uh, about the civil society. I'm representing the government, but to be honest today, I think with no single exception, all the speakers they were talking about the multi-stakeholders' involvement. And I think we have 
seen a couple of representatives from the civil society who have been actively involved with us in this discussion. So to be fair to the discussion today, civil society is really a main pillar in our way to going forward to be able really to go with our plans for a better utilization for the internet. Having said that, and as I mentioned, Egypt will be very honored to contribute to the efforts with other stock stakeholders as well to take this step forward because we believe what we have witnessed today uh, by having all the stakeholders uh, involved in the internet governance. Uh, I think this is a great, great place to have all the ideas together and to come up with some activities to lead us to be in the right direction. So um, Egypt is, is definitely, when I mentioned that, will be more than happy to host one of these regional, uh, like the Net Mondial in Brazil. Definitely number one priority for us to involve all the stakeholders involving the civil society. So I would love anyway to see all the involvement of uh, the stakeholders in this. And uh, definitely we encourage, by the way, the involvement, especially as I mentioned today about the developing world and the need really for better utilization and access to internet. This is the only way, honestly, as I mentioned, to, to fight transparent, to fight corruption, to increase transparency and productivity and to achieve social equity. And if I may just to add one comment, today we were talking about accessibility. But in developing countries, I believe accessibility, we have to add very important word, which is affordability as well. Technology, yes, has all the solution, but how we can use the technology to be able to reach marginalized areas, uh, to, to be able to serve people with disability, to be able to achieve social equity, Affordability is, is another key word that we have to be very, very focused to find solutions for the developing countries for better utilization for the internet. Okay, thank you. Other, uh, other comments? Yes. Thank you. Um, so I very much appreciate the opening spirit of um, viewing this as an experiment and certainly the point made about legitimacy will come from followership. It, it is not granted from above and on tablets, and it is not there yet. We, have, we don't have legitimacy until we uh, generate some kind of outcome that inspires people around the world to engage and say, yes, we want to move forward with that. So that's the real test. Um, I also really like the framing of the, the point of this exercise is to go from the what to the how. I think all of us have been engaged in conversations around the world about all kinds of subjects, all kinds of problems, and I think that's one thing that is shared. Everyone wants to go to the next level in part because of the urgency of the, of the fragmentation and you know losing the open internet, that threat. I have to say, I, in what I've heard right now, there's a step we've missed. Um, I, one expression was used, the substance is what happens post six months. I think in order to solve problems and go from the what to the how, we have to at least identify and frame and agree to the problems we're solving. Because every person in this room and everybody out there on the web listening would prioritize them differently. And we have to have some kind of agreement about what are we trying to tackle? What are the types of topics we can address? I heard today access, global access, which is largely an infrastructure problem. I heard fragmentation as an issue. I heard the primacy of human rights. And I think for human rights groups, for civil society, it has to be there. Uh, the primacy of human rights, and then we get into the nature of new government structures. But we have to define the problems we're solving in order to go to new governments. Governance. Uh, yeah. So that implies that uh, again, getting back to the 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 business at hand here, which is the question on the table is how to structure. The, the consultation. So that implies that we should be having a consultation only, not only about, you know, how a, an ultimate framework ought to be uh, 
architected or, or structured, but also you know what it ought to focus on because that might influence the shape of it. So I, I, I think that that's a good point. So let me let me go first over here. Um, Carolina, did you want to come in or? And then I'll, I'll take it to you. No, I, I actually was about to, to say exactly you said, and I think that goes back to Brett's point that uh, when nobody here should be called founding partners because this already implies a legitimacy that's not there yet exactly because we have not taken these broad, bigger decisions. And this uh, does create a lot of anxiety among those who are extremely qualified and are not, and are not here today, right? So has Brazil did really well in a very short amount of time uh, Brazil spurred and fostered the constituency of multi-stakeholder groups that allowed the stakeholders themselves to elect their members. So I think that's something really important. And besides, and, and they did that there, so why we are not able to do that? There was a process track and a substance track. Uh, we have agreed in a series of topics there, and human rights and access were um, among those topics, and, and privacy was one of the spurring elements of that meeting, actually. Um, so I really would call us today to set these tracks moving as fast as we can to build this legitimacy. Thank you. Yeah, let me, before passing to uh, additional, let me just say that one of the things coming out of this discussion uh, is resonating with me, and, and that is that I assume that this consultation uh, process would be a distributed one. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not f for this institution or, one, or even this. I think what we're looking for, in part, particularly from people who want to be part of a transitional steering committee, is to help uh, increase the outreach 
through their own devices and platforms. And so I appreciate very much uh, your comments and yours as well, Minister, and, and others in that regard. We've had a uh, colleague here who's been wanting uh, the floor, and then we'll c come back to the panel. Thank you, Jeremy Malcolm from EFF. Um, just on the very concrete point about the composition of the Transitional Steering Committee, um, the suggestion was made um, that OneNet could uh, take on this task. In fact, um, civil society has its own um, group now to put forward uh, representatives to panels. Um, it's called the Internet Governance Civil Society Coordination Group and it contains representatives or liaisons from all of the major civil society groups and networks that we know of in this space including the ICANN Non-Commercial Stakeholders Group, Best Bits, the Internet Governance Caucus, Diplo Foundation, APC, Civicus and uh, the JustNet Coalition. So um, we do have a structure in place to do that but as Brett said I'm not sure that we have uh, we're ready to jump in just yet. Um, until today, we didn't have all of the information that we needed about what this initiative was going to be all about. And to be frank, we still don't really have all that information that we need to make that decision. So we'll need to go back to our constituencies and consult with them and tell them what we know and come back with a list of questions about what we don't know. Um, there are big questions remaining, such as the ongoing role of the World Economic Forum, as Brett uh, raised that is going to be an issue for civil society people. Um, so we need to consult about this. We're not going to be able to put forward representatives to the Transitional Steering Committee today. We may not be able to do so until uh, after the IGF. Um, so we may be looking at um, a couple of weeks before we can come back with names. If we come back with names, we may actually decide um, that we don't want to um, participate in the way that this has been framed. We might have some suggestions about other ways of framing it. So just to scale back the expectations and again echoing what Brett said. Okay, thanks. As I stated at the outset, uh, we didn't necessarily uh, presume that we would have a, a fixed decision on the composition. This was more to get a sense of a center of gravity here and uh, whatnot. I think, um, and uh, Bouvero. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, yes, uh, uh, a couple uh, comments, if, if I may, to try and, and uh, contribute to this. We, uh, we heard uh, this morning, and, and it's been echoed here a little bit, that yes, there's the what is it exactly that we will do, and we don't really know when we want to, um, and this initiative, I understand, wants to uh, shape it. I think one useful su suggestion I heard this morning uh, is to try and map what already exists uh, and which um, uh, uh, entities, organizations, uh, forums exist that um, uh, do something on internet governance but because it's our subject. And, and maybe that's something that could be part of the consultation process. Uh, make it something that helps identify what already exists that, of course, we wouldn't want to, um, uh, to duplicate. So that, that's my first uh, uh, suggestion. Um, the second one, and, and um, uh, yes, and, and I just heard uh, Jeremy on this, of course, we're not. We're we're also. Uh, I'm representing uh, a number of members, and we're not completely clear as to the end objective of this. I think what we need to do is try and refine it, and maybe we can make it a, uh, an objective of of the transitional steering committee to propose uh, a, a clearer objective, uh, because yes, this is this is part of what um, uh, we're trying to do. Um, and and the third one is more a uh, question, um, and and we have have some uh, people that are probably more uh, expert than I am in this. What is the best way to ensure uh, we work in a way that is both fully transparent, uh, and, and of course uh, making this available is, is a good step in that, uh, but there's probably things that we could do beyond that. Is, is there uh, a way when we start working on some sort of outputs, uh, either proposed uh, documents or scope or, or, or result of a mapping exercise or preparation for uh, a press release that we could 
review drafts uh, together. Uh, and maybe that would be something that will help a number of people around here being uh, comfortable with uh, what is being discussed here. So that's um, just a, a couple of suggestions on one trying to do the, uh, the mapping of what exists through uh, consultation, maybe trying to ask the um, transitional steering committee to propose uh, uh, an objective and, and the scope, and then uh, really a call for uh, comments and suggestions on how we can be uh, transparent in the process uh, as per best practices. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, just uh, briefly, just to say that uh, following my colleague Helmi from Egypt, just want to informed that uh, September 15th, uh, Fadi Shehadi in, is coming to Macedonia. We're gonna organize a regional ministerial conference, first time in that region, in order to talk about the internet governance and involve the civil society, the non-government organizations, something that uh, hasn't been done in the region, but uh, I think the awareness that all of us in this room can contribute, everybody in their own sector can help come up with the steering committee members or ideas or, or projects or topics that need to be discussed. Looking at the agenda, I think we have half an hour to go and picking up steering committee members and we have been talking for half an hour, I think it's gonna be Mission Impossible part three maybe, even Tom Cruise cannot do it. Just uh, following on that, I believe that, four, yeah, thank you. I believe that uh, <laughs> Americans are always protecting Hollywood stories. Uh, I, th I think it's, in, it's important that um, everybody coming from a specific uh, region that uh, we continue to talk to our peers, talk to our members coming from civil society. You always have some very active groups and you have majority who are not active but interested in topic. Same in the governments and we have talked many times with Fadi that uh, some governments who don't show interest in a particular topic, they they lean towards their partners, their friends in uh, relations, and when it comes to decision, they will follow what the leader from their neighborhood or the partner will do. They'll also vote on it. So I think if we all uh, just uh, do as much as we can from the group that we come, then it will be very easy for the steering committee next time when we meet or whoever is decided to run can come up with the solutions. Why I'm saying this because six months will come very soon. I remember when we started in London, the high-level panel. Six months came in no time. So Barcelona will come sooner than we think. And if we have not spread the word and talked to our peers, then Barcelona will be again just another wonderful meeting where we can see the new technologies. But are we going to be prepared where we can have the support from everybody involved? I'm not sure. So that's my two cents. Thanks. Okay. Well, I'd like to echo some of the points that were already made. Maybe that's my, my background in from research. If you start um, setting out a consultation, you do usually want to know who asks the question, and you want to know what it's for, and you want to know um, the question. You know, and I think it's very difficult to go out there and say we're doing a consultation, but really not knowing what it should deliver. I mean, I don't think we even agree on what questions to ask because it's very difficult to scope this wide uh, wide field. And um, so somehow you have to start setting up a process that narrows this down to come to something that's concrete. And you could even think of that uh, we actually, that, that a consultation is give us, the community, give us the questions that you want to have asked and then and then pose them back to the commission, uh, to, the, uh, to the community. So um, I really think, um, we should uh, we should think quite deeply about uh, before we we just agree on doing a consultation uh, why we're doing this and then uh, and get the questions right and maybe it's a it's a bit an outlandish idea but to ask the community what to ask questions they would like asked might be a way forward because at least then you got a legitimacy of the people asking the questions because you then have the questions that come from the community themselves. So just building on um, those comments, it, it seems to me we're perhaps trying to over-engineer this and overthink this. 
So let's step back and go and talk about the first principles. We're all here today because we all believe that the NetMundial event was an incredibly important event. We also are here today because we saw the report of the high-level panel chaired by President Ilvis, and there are recommendations in there that we don't want to just leave on the uh, table. It's, and so we're all here today because we think there's something next that should happen. But as it's been pointed out by many people in the room, just because we think that, we have no legitimacy yet established with the global internet community that there is a shared view that some sort of action or next steps is necessary. So it seems to me that is our primary issue. And I think uh, to the, the comments that have been made, that's probably the first question we need to have, both because in having that consultation, which needs to be, as Fadi mentioned, broad and widespread and involving lots of different organizations, it helps build legitimacy around the notion that there really are next steps that ought to be taken. And more importantly, since we all believe that the multi-stakeholder process yields better outcomes because of the engagement of the community, it lets us get the input of the community to help frame and shape exactly what those next steps ought to be. So each of us in our own mind has a sense of what we want those next steps to be, but we haven't tested those against the community. And more importantly, we haven't asked the community what it thinks. So I think the next six months ought to be, we ought to be focused on a laser in terms of reaching as many people as possible in as many contexts as we can reach them. And many have been mentioned, the IGF next week, regional IGFs over the course of the next several months, ICANN, regional Net Mundial, internet society meetings, there's lots of opportunities to reach out. And the question is, how do you structure uh, basically teeing up the question, which is what comes after Net Mundial and what comes after the Ilvis report and getting that feedback. I was very much intrigued by some of the projects that were presented this morning by Erz and Stefan and the others. And it seems like that might be useful pump priming ideas to put in front of people, but by no means should that be presented as anything other than here are some ideas that have already started to emerge from the community. And as additional ideas emerge through these consultations, they ought to be wrapped into the discussion so that a group that comes up with some wonderful ideas uh, at, at Andile's meeting in Africa, we can take those ideas and present them at the meeting in Argentina three months later or a month later, whatever. So the question is, how do you create that iterative consultation that builds on what we're we're hearing from the communities, um, but it's it, unless we can solve the problem in the in the concern that you're hearing from the civil society people, which I think is representative of the larger community in terms of the hesitation people have about this, this project is not going to succeed. So if we, I think we've got to spend the next six months focusing on that question um, and really understanding what the community really thinks ought to happen as a result of these very important events of this year and then get on with it. Um, thanks, yes, um, just to, I think, echo what uh, has been said to a large extent, but I think we need to deconstruct what we mean by consultation and engagement. I think we can engage on certain kinds of uh, ways to solicit opinions. We can also engage to actually extract ideas, and we can also engage to actually become wiser about what is already happening. And I think we need to organize it in a, in a more deconstructed manner. And I would argue that to a large extent what is missing is a, found, uh, if you can call it, a, a founding value proposition uh, that then can be made public and people can annotate. Uh, that would be like step number one probably is to have like an annotated kind of process, meaning is the uh, uh, is the uh, the agenda or the 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 reason that was sent uh, the invitation is it open? Uh, can people annotate it? Can they make comments? So start with that, which is then ultimately having a discussion about the value proposition of distributed governance, which I think is really important and is really the new wave uh, of internet governance that uh, uh, it would excite people. And then you can go into specific questions around. Give us examples about where distributed governance works give us examples about what issues are in need of actually a more coordinated uh, uh, fashion. And I think deconstructing that might be uh, making it meaningful. And I totally agree with the 
uh, uh, with the need for consultation, uh, which is the is the idea behind the tool of the mapping is that uh, a mapping tool like that can only be created by actually engaging and doing it in a crowdsourced uh, uh, manner. But again, it's a structured and deconstructed way of engaging, soliciting not only opinions but also expertise. Thank you very much, Barak Otieno, once again. Um, I think in terms of principle, we have the net mundial to borrow from. And we are spending too much time um, uh, discussing about what needs to be done and what shouldn't be done. If we have identified the gaps, then let's move ahead and do it. Um, the IGF was, in my opinion, uh, got a lot of credibility by being supported by the UN. We are now at the World Economic Forum. It's a credible institution. It can help, it can give us the credibility to close the gaps. So I think other than spending time discussing the what's and what not, six months will be over when we are still going around in circles. So uh, if you are here, I believe you are a leader, you are a champion, and you need to get things done. So, that, so let's look at what needs to be done and how we can do it. Um, if you are in it, you're in it. If you're not, you're not in it. You can't go into war when you're double-minded. So uh, I'm sorry I have to bring it out that way, but um, the discussion is supposed to be at the IGF that will be in Istanbul on the floor. That's where we meet and we discuss. But I believe we are here to look at how we can get things done, unless I'm mistaken. And if that's the case, then let's look at what needs to be done within the six months period and do it. But let's bear in mind that people need to be included even as we go along. That's my take. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm Paul Wilson from APNIC, um, an organization that uh, occupies a sort of intersection of two important communities. One is the Asia Pacific, the other is the technical community. And I think, um, I'm sorry to, to sort of bring us back to this question of who's here. It's not a question of, of representation, but it's just a question of presence in the room. And I think neither of those communities is really um, here sufficiently yet. And I, I just want to motivate that. I think um, we hear a lot about the fact that um, half of the internet's population is in the Asia region at the moment. But more than that, the vast majority of internet growth for the next several years is going to be in that region. It, it's in that region that the, the biggest pressures of growth of the internet and, and the um, governance in, impacts of that are going to be felt. And I really think that that needs to be, needs to be considered. Um, it takes some time for language and other issues for that community to be brought in properly. So I'm afraid you know, it, it may impact on the on the timeframes that we're talking about here, and I do sympathise with the, the concerns about um, the timing uh, factor here. On the uh, second community, the technical community, I just want to remind us that it is the technical community that's actually responsible, that is challenged and responsible for maintaining aspects of the internet that we take for granted entirely in this room. So whether we're talking about the neutrality of the infrastructure and the ability to have network neutrality or the global point-to-point -point nature of the inter infrastructure, the ability to actually have a global internet. These things are not to be taken for granted. They are maintained and ensured uh, at the technical level. And so when we talk about the internet, as people have done many times today, you know, 10 years down the track, we might be talking about an internet that is, a, is quite a different internet, unless the things that we take for granted are, are protected. And that, that, as I say, is largely in the hands of the technical community. And I think they too should be um, really uh, encouraged to, to be here in more presence. Thanks. My contribution, of course, and folks knew that uh, we are not here representing the whole civil society, so my comment now is actually more even in an individual basis. Uh, coming to this meeting, I really saw three things based on that, the documents that first leaked and then were put out and then we received, right? So one is moving forward 
the net mundial principles and outcome document. If we, see, if we say that we need to bind ourselves by what is in there in terms of even of substance, of course we can have consultation on priority, but maybe that's the first step, even because this meeting is called Net Mundial Initiative. The second thing I saw coming in was a desire to understand best practice for multi-stakeholderism. And I think that the contribution of academia is crucial here. And Berkman, as we heard, and soon they're going to be announcing more, they are doing 10 case studies on best practice for multi-stakeholderism. And as I heard from Earth, there are some good news coming out of it, <laughs> thankfully. And finally, the third issue is the platform for assistance, right? And I see that has a mapping exercise. One thing that could be done really well, Transparency International have this uh, knowledge. I'm also part of Open Knowledge Foundation. Folks there also have that knowledge is, what are the, the platforms there? So if you annotate the Net Mundial principles with what's out there that's already addressing, we're going to soon realize what issues are missing and what things have not been addressed by others. Because access, for example, Tons of organizations, multilateral, multi-stakeholders, civil society companies are addressing that. One convergence point is the Alliance for Affordable Internet. So we need to identify that and we need to use theories of open innovation, crowdsourcing, and all those things to bring the smart that's out there. So if we don't agree that there are these three things that were actually clear, or I think the hope was that they were clear in the agenda, we won't move forward. But maybe we decide as a collective we don't want to move forward. But there are three very specific things that we could contribute to the world in terms of issue mapping. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Janis? Yeah, no, thank, thank you very much. I, actually, uh, I, was, I was willing to make exactly the same point. We, we're really over-constructing this, this process. Uh, if if at, at the very beginning of today's meeting we were saying that uh, we would uh, uh, present uh, an action initiative. And we have uh, very clear guidance. That is the outcome of uh, Net Mondial. We have uh, uh, principles and way forward, which was agreed in multi-stakeholder uh, 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 manner by uh, all, let's say, uh, communities. So uh, let's ta take that uh, and implement it in a, in a way which is feasible. Uh, for this, uh, for this, uh, uh, let's say, in this setting, what is feasible? First of all, the, the as I see, this initiative may bring the uh, internet governance, uh, let's say, uh, questions uh, to the attention of the uh, audience, which uh, IGF and UN is not reaching out. And uh, that would uh, bear uh, clearly uh, potential interest from their side and uh, participation uh, in, the, in the processes and contribution to, the, to those processes. And that already would be an enormous uh, contribution uh, to the existing or strengthening of existing multi-stakeholder uh, governance uh, model. Secondly, uh, the uh, Net Mondial was very clear, suggesting that IGF should be strengthened. Let's think how this initiative can strengthen IGF. What concrete steps should be taken? Maybe, uh, again, the best of concrete steps would be to bring maybe uh, 10 out of, uh, let's say, uh, 50 top companies of the world to IGF and to participate, because all of them, they're using uh, internet services in one way or another, directly or indirectly. Uh, if, if, for instance, uh, big automobile companies will show up to IGF and will contribute in, from their perspective in this debate, that would be already a big achievement uh, and, and then sort of step forward uh, that uh, really this initiative could, uh, could bring. So let's do not over sort of uh, uh, engineer these things, but take take uh, agreed document and start implementation.
Thank you, Philip Metzger from the Swiss Federal Office of Communications. I just uh, have a very simple question. It's actually following up also on what Yanis referred to, although I didn't think as far, of course, as as Yanis, but I would also like to pick up on what uh, what Larry mentioned earlier, um, that we need to use all these different fora that exist. And my simple question was, in view of next week in Istanbul, we've mentioned we've mentioned uh, Davos, we've mentioned Barcelona. Istanbul will be here much, much, much more quickly. Uh, and so my simple question is, um, how will the Net Mondial initiative be portrayed or even consulted? Uh, maybe you can refresh our memories if you don't know that yet, the chairman maybe, or, or Fadi or, or Virgilio briefly. How will that be portrayed, uh, discussed, uh, including, of course, not only what has been prepared in view of this meeting today, but also uh, taking into account the actual discussions and the outcomes of today's, today's sessions? Why don't we address that point, and then I want to come back to try to begin to wrap, uh, or sort of interpret, if you will, and suggest. But would you like to yes. make some suggestions in this respect? And Fadi or Alan, my colleague, Alan Marcus, who leads our, our work in this area. But, but you, uh, Giannis, first, we appreciate any yes. suggestions you might have. No, the, the, cer certainly, there will, there will be a number of uh, sessions where uh, Net Mondial initiative will be discussed in depth. So starting with day zero, where is a day-long event uh, on Net Mondial. Then there will be um, a speci specially dedicated main session on IGF and um, uh, uh, Internet Governance Ecosystem, where uh, Net Mondial will be uh, prominently featured, uh, and, and uh, there will be a report from, from Net Mondial. Uh, and certainly there are a num number of uh, workshops that will be dealing with Net Mondial uh, issues or related issues. An opportunity to present this initiative, there are also will be a number. Uh, many around this table will be speaking uh, either at the opening session or in, in uh, uh, those um, uh, sessions I mentioned. There will be uh, I can uh, open forum where most probably this also will be presented and, and uh, again a num number of uh, opportunities uh, will be given in, during the IGF. No, I, I mean, one thing we want to be careful of is not to disrupt the IGF and, and all the work that it already has planned to do, right? So there is no intention to disrupt. It is exactly as Jana said, there's already workshops. Um, we'll, we'll look at them, we'll listen, and, and as, as part of the consultation process, um, certainly in the high-level uh, leaders meeting, we'll have a, you know, our, our short five-minute intervention. We'll, we'll just uh, describe exactly what happened here, what, why this was important, and how it will support the overall IGF, and then all the uh, other uh, ish, uh, other sessions that uh, Giannis referred to will, will be a participant, as, as everyone else is. Yes, and Alan, you will be with us as well. I mean, the WEF will yes. be joining us yes, there. Yes, it will be me per personally. If, if I could suggest something, Rick, that helps us move forward. I'm going to base uh, my comments uh, starting where Larry left us. I want to remind us we are not starting from zero. We are basing all of this on the work that thousands of people have been doing for the last year. So the sense that this group is suddenly deciding anything should be killed right now. This is work that is based on hard efforts that have been made by thousands of people of all walks of sectors for the last year. Let's be just clear on that. Now, in order to avoid anyone saying this group of elite people met near the lake and made a decision, let's pick specific things that came out from the multi-stakeholder reports that both Net Mundial produced and the panel of President Ilves Rufu, and just follow these. Let's not move a hair from these. So let's start with a simple thing. Carolina said it. Are we all in agreement that the Net Mundial Internet Governance Principles are the ones we're going to base our initiative on? Anybody disagree with that? Okay, Abemus Principles. That's already huge. Thank you, Virgilio. Thank you, Brazil. You know, this is the work of thousands of people that led us to these principles. We base ourselves on them. That's step one. Step two, these reports, both President Ilves' report and Brazil, recommended strongly the following things. 
both of them. Number one, we need mechanisms to map issues to solutions. Both of them have specific recommendations to that. Okay, is this something we can agree? Not because we decided, but that some of us around this room are willing to pool our efforts together and go give it a shot. Not finalize it, not deliver it, but let's, let's start working on it. Let's see where we get in six months. We may get to a, a good set of designs, we may get to a set of recommendations, a set of specifications, we may build a prototype if we're really, really good, but let's start the work on a recommendation that thousands of people gave us in both of these reports. That's one recommendation. Anybody has a disagreement that we shouldn't do this because Net Mundial was wrong or President Ilves was not really awake when they make this decision. I think we're in sync. This is a real thing. It's on the table. It's needed. Next recommendation. They both reports said that multi-stakeholderism will not hold in the long term unless it is practiced nationally, regionally, and globally. Both reports recommended strongly that we start thinking how countries, how regions can start learning how to do internet governance in a multi-stakeholder way at their level. So that when they come to ICANN and the IETF and the APNIC, they're not shocked by the model of multi-stakeholderism. You all remember, those of you who were in Sao Paulo, that some people were shocked by Sao Paulo. Oh, well, what is this? How do you decide things like this? It doesn't work for us because they've never seen multi-stakeholders sit down and work and come up through consensus with a decision. So I think it's important to agree that this is a second clear recommendation. And today we heard Brazil, today Costa Rica approached me as well. They said, we're willing to work to put together these recommendations into a set of best practices and to figuring out how we can help the world embrace multi-stakeholderism at a national level. Uh, the minister from Egypt leaned on me earlier and he said, I really would like to think how we can do this in Egypt, right? Well, how do we guide him? Do we just ship him to Sao Paulo? <laughs> do we ship him to Costa Rica? No, I think we should come up with a more institutionalized approach to address this issue. Here's a second recommendation that came from both reports that I think we can act on now. And in six months, where will we be? I don't know. Let's start. Let's not worry today exactly what this will produce. There are many good people here of goodwill. Let's get to work and solve that. Third recommendation from Ilves report. They said, do not try to create a central internet governance model. Focus on a distributed internet governance model. Okay, that's easier said than done. If people want to focus on a, I think most of us here agree we don't want some massive new institution to govern the internet. Civil society would agree, I think, we would agree, technical institutions, all of us would agree, we don't want another major institution that runs the internet, okay? We want a distributed model. Well, how do you build a distributed model? People ask me, I want, we want to create a group of people to go solve privacy, okay? How do you select people? When they meet, how do they make decisions? How do they include everybody? So we asked, uh, Harvard to go start thinking about this. <laughs> How do we create distributed governance groups? What thoughts academically we can put together, research that helps us think what's happened? So that's a third idea that came out of a specific recommendation from a report we did not decide here in our uh, uh, ivory tower. This is a report that th worked on for months, very hard work by a lot of people of goodwill, right? And the fourth and last recommendation was two kits. Give us toolkits. We cannot have these distributed governance groups start and then work on paper and they need toolkits, they need platforms. So we propose today that we create a toolkit to help them. These are specific four ideas. They come out of reports. We didn't write them. Not even Rick in his greatest moment of lucidity wrote them. They, they were written by multi-stakeholders meeting for hundreds of hours. So I don't want us to uproot ourselves from this. We are all children of these processes, and it is incumbent upon us to carry that baton forward and see where it takes us. That's what we can do in six months. But if we spend six months selecting who will sit at what table, we will show up again uh, in GSMA or wherever, 
you know, let's do it in an island. It doesn't matter if it's GSMA. And then we will be arguing who picked whom. And then nothing again. And finally, I just want to be clear with the head of uh, IGF MAG sitting next to us and Elia Armstrong here from UNDESA. We should not be doing things to replace the work of the IGF. So let's not start a consultation process to discuss what are internet issues. They have that already. If you want to discuss that, they have so many issues. Go pick. It's a, it's a big battle full of fish. <laughs> Take a few and we can solve. Let's focus on solving, not doing what other people do. And then uh, I want to uh, be blunt because you won't do it. I will be blunt. We say these people in Davos are elitists and exclusive people. If we exclude them, we're exclusive people. <laughs> They're part of the decision-making process. If they want to discuss all day things in Davos, let them. By all means, we go fight all over the world to get attention of decision makers. And now the decision makers are saying, let's get together and talk about your issues, my issues. And we say, they're elitist. We should say, perfect. Now, if it's the only place the discussion is taking place, I agree with you, Brett. But it's not. They're proposing, hey, we're going to make our platform available. Engage them. Let's put our issues in front of them. We need you. We need you to be part of that dialogue. And I know you're thinking about it and questioning whether we're exclusive or... Frankly, sometimes the way a civil society acts, you become exclusive. You know, we are inviting you. We are making sure you're part of this. We are civil society too, right? So let's be together. This is a chance. Let's not miss it. And if it doesn't work, stop us. That's why we need you at the table with us every step of the way. And as you know, uh, Eileen said very clearly, this is an exploratory path. Let's go explore. Let's learn together. And if we act, frankly, uh, with all due respect to governments here, like the intergovernmental organization that sometimes lock up because of procedure and rule, then you know why are we bothering? Let's just hand them the job. They're ready to take it. But it's not going to happen. Because for the internet to be governed properly, all of us need to work and fast. So I, I beg you to reconsider. Well, let me, uh, let me make some suggestions for how we might interpret this discussion and, uh, and move forward. <laughs> <laughs> now look, uh, obviously there's a, there's a creative tension here. There's a creative tension, obviously, uh, between um, process, you know, very robust, deliberate uh, uh, thought process about what, how, and what not. And on the other hand, in fact, having uh, performance, uh, effective outcomes on, on pieces, not the whole problem set, but pieces of that problem set. And we've been certainly encouraged to f identify those pieces of the problem set, which would benefit by variable geometry cooperation to make progress that's not absolute progress but is significant progress and that helps the performance of the entire ecosystem generally that's how i come to this table we're not uh, fundamentally sitting here the only part of this which is really more akin to a um, to a standard a universal standing standard setting process and even then it's not entirely is this basic question of whether and how there should be some sort of organizational framework put around a set of activities going long term. Beyond that, it, it's, it's a narrower question about what pieces of the problem would benefit by some additional focused effort and pooled resources and expertise. And, and I, th I think we have to find the balance between process and effectiveness by thinking about our exercise in those terms. Let me suggest more practically how we might go forward here. First, on the basic idea, I mean, all of this we ought to be sub subjecting to public comment mm -hmm. and, and comment, a curated comment as well from specific pools of, of expertise and perspectives, stakeholders and whatever that are particularly relevant. As I listen to the discussion, I, I hear that uh, what would be useful as next steps in the consultation realm are to you know, post a very general I mean, pose a very general set of questions, mm -hmm. which is what does what what do people generally think ought to come next after the Net Mundial, yeah. a landmark uh, meeting, and the 
high-level panel discussions or otherwise in this field. We're not representing that, that this process is going to be the only place, or it's probably not going to cover the waterfront of the responses we get, but I hear from everybody that they'd like to ask a general question. Fine, let's pose that question and get some perspective. Then there was a, you know, a, a, a suggestion that we, um, we break that down a little bit um, into certain areas, like you know, what, what are best practices that people think um, are promising for wider application, and how might they suggest, you know, what's, what's the missing element of scaling the application of that? Ask that general question, and maybe make some specific uh, sub, sub uh, areas of that where you're particularly inviting a focus. Um, a lot, some of these issues are about mobilizing resources better, particularly for developing countries and disadvantaged or marginalized uh, areas. These are collective action problems. There are resources out there where you don't need a universal agreement on a structure. You just need an agreement among a sufficient number of uh, actors who decide that, you know, this is a worthwhile uh, area to, for us to pool our resources on. Let's ask that question. As a platform for assistance, as you said, what are things that developing countries would particularly benefit by if the, world, if the international community were better organized to, uh, to pool resources and, and support either on the governance side, build, you know, helping to do what you did in, in, uh, in Brazil, because not all countries have the resources that you had in, in Brazil to mobilize those governance frameworks, and similarly on the access side. Let's solicit comment on that from you as well as the wider uh, international uh, community. Are there other ways we can support the UN processes or otherwise? From what I hear, I'm not a specialist in this field, but I, I understand that the resourcing of the IGF, which is a precious international resource itself, has been sort of episodic and not, not systematic. Well, then why don't we pose the question directly? Uh, how, how could international cooperation be better mobilized, whether plurilaterally, public-private, or otherwise, um, to provide a more sustainable footing for that very valuable thing. That's a specific, let's, get, let's get some comment on that. So I don't think we need to, I'm using these not as an exclusive list or exhaustive list, but as an illustration of how we strike a balance here between let's have, a, let's have an organizational consultation and discussion, um, but also let's, let's, as has been suggested by a number of you, uh, let's get some specific suggestions on the table from both those of us who are the cognoscenti, so to speak, as well as the wider international community. And that will put that on the table. And, this, and the steering committee, if you will, this transitional steering committee will have, a, I think, a special role in helping to, to interpret that, help shape it in a way that we can have a focused conversation around to identify whether we think there are particular areas where we ought to be spotlighting, which then would help galvanize more expertise and more resources. So I think that's what I would suggest. Now, the, we haven't gotten to the mechanisms here. I think we're prepared here in the forum to use our... Uh, you know, our virtual platform for this purpose. But I would ask the question, are there other websites or virtual platforms which would also be willing to post some of these questions as part of the collective undertaking? You know, whether, whether it's the, the, the website that was really robust around the Net Mondial initiative or not, at the, at the, you know, up, or others here. We need to have a distributed approach uh, to this uh, as well. So um, I, I think one other point here is uh, maybe, maybe two. One is the mapping. So let us indeed um, encourage um, some academic effort um, on uh, some mapping here, and then subject that to the rigor of scrutiny by this group and the public, uh, uh, public community more widely. Uh, I think that would be extremely helpful. It would help to focus uh, the input coming in. Uh, and um, beyond that, I would say uh, that's, that's, a, that's kind of an initiative initial set of steps for how we move forward from here, okay? We need to have a little bit of a dialogue bilaterally with a number of you to see whether you're willing to, to be engaged in this. Some of you have already stepped forward and said, on the consultation front, you'd be willing to, to yourselves help to shape and sponsor some consultations. Excellent, and I think we should try to, try to uh, collect that so people can see what that looks like, where, where people have volunteered to do it and, and whatnot. Now, um, uh, on, the, uh, on the steering committee itself, because we're, we're sort of running out of time here. Um, I, here's what I would suggest uh, going forward. We, we have taken uh, the step as the sort of incubator, uh, incubational platform here, um, uh, to uh, identify some governments and other stakeholder institutions who look to us like they could provide kind of an inner ring of good filtering and vetting 
and interpretation of things. And you see them. You see the names here uh, around the table. And I think what I would suggest as a, as a next step is we invite them to come back to us and indicate whether they'd be willing to play that kind of role, uh, informal kind of role to help help shape uh, both the substantive development and the consultative approach and, and the interpretation of what we hear back. Um, and that we also um, seek uh, other suggestions or comments on the, the group here from you and others. And that I, I think what, you need, what we need to do here in order to be able to proceed in this regard, because the forum doesn't want to just um, do this, uh, do the interpretation by itself. That would be inappropriate and, and frankly overwhelming given the, uh, the culture uh, of this particular community. It, but so we need, a, we need some, some, some uh, senior, uh, a diverse group of, of senior people to help, uh, help interpret and advise and shape and identify where there may be center of gravity or rough consensus of things that really have value. So. I, I would suggest that um, we take that as a next step, hear back from those of you who are sitting around the table whether you, you be prepared to engage in that fashion, whether you suggest others in that regard. And, and additionally, once we have a sense of that, and certainly take feedback from those sitting here in the room as well, we'll put out a notional list of who we have in mind in that regard. I hear in the one case in civil society that they would like to have a, their own deliberate think and, and maybe come back and propose their own names, which is great. I think we, I, from my perspective, I'd be perfectly uh, con, uh, happy uh, to say that for uh, you know a few of the, the civil society slots that we absolutely want to have in this little interpretive uh, transitional steering committee, that if the preference is for the for that particular community itself to put forward some suggestions, to enable you guys to do so. My, what I would want to say, though, is that we, we, we would want it within a couple of weeks or so to be able to take this next step. And, and I hope people would give us the latitude uh, of, of taking, an initiative, taking the initiative ultimately to, to post that list uh, within that time frame and begin to, to gather you in conversation in this more limited way. I don't think, you know, we having been in a variety of governance uh, settings, there are robust debates on what's, what's, what's the maximum size for an actually an effective uh, uh, you know, uh, shaping process, agenda setting process. And my sense is that we really ought to stay uh, below 20 in that regard, based on prior experience. Again, this is not a decision making. This is basically, these people are gonna help shape the contours of what we do. Ultimately, anything that we do is gonna be subject to uh, the rigor of scrutiny by the public and by, by this community more generally. So we're going to have another layer or two of feedback. It's just that you need some people to help interpret what, you, what, what the question is, what you shape as, as, as the ask. Last, last point in this regard. On the very specific uh, agenda for action-oriented enabling projects of the type that Fadi has just mentioned and that we, we spotlighted for initial suggestions in this regard early in the day, these, I think, these clearly need, for their own purpose, to have their own request for comment, right? The, the, we ought to put more specific material out on them and, and get comment on them, and we ought to put the mo very specific question out, what other types of, uh, of enabling types of thought processes or uh, analytic analytical underpinnings would be useful and who might volunteer uh, to do them. So I think that that would be uh, uh, crucially important. And within our own networks, I mean, we're a network of networks, including a network of expertise, network of networks of expert experts and expertise and in institutions. I think we'll, we'll want to tap uh, our communities, among others, uh, for that question. So I, I would lay that out as a, a suggested framework for some interim steps here all the while trying to balance here between uh, good process, due, due diligence, if you will, due consultation on the one hand, but also getting the ball rolling on what is effectively not a universal norm setting exercise. It's, it's an exercise in trying to encourage, uh, to reveal areas where key actors and experts want to pool effort to make progress on some of these public issues, even if it's not the absolute or ultimate answer to the question. So let me, let me pose that as a, as a suggested way forward. I, I see a number of heads nodding. Um, are there any, any, uh, any burning uh, comments or suggestions in this regard? Or 
Does this seem generally like a reasonable way forward? Uh, just support. Just yes? Support. Okay. So there, there are a variety of things there. I thank you for, uh, for giving us a little bit of latitude to help uh, move forward in this regard. And uh, with that, I don't want to take much of anybody else's time. You, everybody's been very generous with their time. But would, uh, at the end, just invite, uh, Minister, if you have any closing uh, reflections or last words of guidance uh, to do so. I agree with your suggestion. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, Fadi, if you have any closing reflections? or So what is our homework walking out of here? I, I've just I identified the homework. I don't, I don't want to... So people will need to get back to you around the table as to their interests. Right. If they wish to participate in the consultation or help with it, such as what uh, South Africa uh, and Egypt suggested. Secondly, you're going to ask people around the table and others if they wish to help with the Transitional Steering Committee give you some input? Uh, are we also asking people who wish to help with the specific projects to identify exactly. themselves? The good thing about this being webcast is that we'll be able to go back and we'll go through the list Very of things that good. I okay. mentioned. So everybody has it. And th that'll be good uh, you know, homework, good project management. Yeah. Cl clarifying question. Uh, thank you. I think there is one, one thing which, is, which has to be clear as well on the, on the platform that will be used for consultation. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to make this here in this meeting, and I think WEF is the right platform because it's really credible and it's you have a lot of history. And I think uh, bringing this to the next Davos meeting is going to be vital. And Fadi, uh, making WEF involved in this process, I think, was the right choice from the beginning because it, there is so much of credibility and history on this. And to answer your question and to scare Solomon a little bit, if you guys don't do it, please give it to us. We'll do it as governments. <laughs> you know? But, uh, but, uh, uh, but, yeah. But, but I think I think this has to be be taken as 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 clear so that we can move forward. Uh, we've been involved in this. I've been involved with with Fadi and some of the uh, really distinguished people here in this process. I think it's it's fair to say that this has to be has to move forward with some concrete decisions rather than just making it, rather than just, you know, waste time in some of the important steps that I think is going to be, uh, okay. it's going to be vital next. Uh, Thanks for that. But clearly, we're not the platform. We're, we're a facilitative platform, and, and we, we, we understand that role. And let me close by saying that, I mean, this is a effectively uh, a good faith effort by everybody to carry forward the spirit of Sao Paulo. Yeah. Yes, I have just one yeah. one minor comment is that I would suggest you to expand the participation of the civil society. Will do. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, good travels and whatnot. Uh, look forward to the further engagement. Thank you. Bye-bye.